We'll start off uh, in uh, 10 minutes maximum for each presenter and 2 minutes for questions. Okay. Start off with uh, Dr. Gupta from Medicine 1, who will be presenting on problem. on behalf of Medicine One. So this is Mr. Ah, 53 year old. He's from Velu. Presenting with the complaints of abdominal pain for past two days, more in the right, which is more in the right, right hypochondrium, along with jaundice for two days, vomiting for one day, and fever for one day. The past history in 2012, he was diagnosed to have idiopathic myelofibrosis. It's Jack 2 mutation, which is positive for V617F. And initially, he was on thalidomide prednisolone, which was changed to ruxotinilidine, 10 milligram once daily since 2016. So, examination patients with alert consciousness, with stable vitals, and with the pulse rate, he's tachycardic, and uh, then along with general examination, it was present. Abdomen, there is a tenderness over the right hypochondric region with the hepatomegaly and splenomegaly. So, this is a summarizing 53 year old who is a known case of idiopathic spinal fibrosis now presented with pain in the right hypochondrium with fever and jaundice. So, the differential we considered initially were acute hepatitis, liver abscess, cholecystitis, acute pancreatitis, and acute febrile illness, and a transformation of myelofibrosis to acute leukemia. So, investigations. So, total count is 14,100 uh, along with this neutrophilic predominant. There is no blast cell scene. And uh, in the LFD, there is a total bilirubin is increased 6.56, the direct bilirubin of 1.17. Uh, so, and to rule out the acute pancreatitis, amylase lipase are normal and urea criteria normal. And another, she doesn't have any diabetes mellitus and blood borne viral screen is negative. So, we have done, uh, done ultras on abdomen, like which showed hepatosplenomegaly, gross splenomegaly with the gallbladder grossly distended and filled with echogenic content, likely sludge with edematous work. So he was treated, uh, started on treatment for the acute air calculus polycystitis. But on day two of antibiotics, there is no clinical improvement and he started to have systemic inflammatory response syndrome. So we went ahead and did the repeat CT. So, which has shown an acute emphysematous polycystitis. It's a small collection adjacent to the region of air bouquet, possible small contained perforation. So, the resolution is acute emphysematous acalculus polycystitis. So, uh, then the patient is planned for a cholecystostomy, and the pus is sent for the culture which has grown a E. coli, which is ESBL E. coli. And blood cultures were sterile. So, talking about emphysematous gallbladder, which was uh, first described by May and Strong in 1971, it's mainly due to the ischemia of gallbladder wall and it's more common in adults than children. And so, 50% of patients who are developing emphysematous gallbladder is diabetic. So, is there a non emphysematous gallbladder like? Hmm. A calculus very cholecystitis, it can cause 4 percent in mort mortality, but emphysematous can increase the mortality up to 15 percent. So, these are the clinical features which can differentiate between cholecystitis and emphysematous. So, uh, cholecystitis mostly it affects females, in emphysematous, it affects males. Gallbladder found 90 percent of the time, gallstone found 90 percent of the time in acute cholecystitis and 40 percent in emphysematous. Here, only 5 to five to 10 percentage cases led to perforation, acute polycystitis, but here 20 percentage led to perforation. And here, both of the both of them have the jaundice and acute polycystitis mostly have a positive mouth sign and lymphocytes, there is no positive mouth sign. Only 14 percentage, 14.1 percentage have diabetes in acute polycystitis, but here, the 50 percent of patients have diabetes. So, mortality also significantly increased in emphysematous polycystitis. 
so this is due to why the why the gas how the gas forming organism entering into the gall bladder it is mainly due to ischemia of the gall bladder wall which can cause the neural translocation of gas forming bacteria the most common organisms are clostridium secondarily e coli so treatment mainly it's a surgical emergency so we can treat the patient with broad spectrum antibiotics the so cholecystectomy is the ideal Uh, so if the patient drainage is only for the patient who is critically ill, or in, or it can be in, done in the case of a calculus polycystitis. So this patient has a myelofibrosis. Whether this myelofibrosis is the reason, so maybe it can be due to because myelofibrosis due to the extra medullary hematopoiesis, hematogen, hematopoiesis, gallbladder infiltration can occur. So there are some case reports saying. Myelofibrosis is initially diagnosed in the acalculus polycystitis, and in while doing the polycystectomy and when the gallbladder biopsy, myelofibrosis is diagnosed. So this patient we have completed like we gave two weeks of injection meropenem followed by now he is under follow up with hepatobiliary pancreatic surgery and he is planned for interval polycystectomy. Questions. Is the is the fever, pain, jaundice. The potential is the same. The first difference was acute hepatitis. Is the etiology for hepatitis that you heard? It can be acute viral hepatitis, hepatitis C. Hepatitis C is the greatest presence of the viral load from malaria. Study showed the first. This is the first case which was presented uh, as a a calculus polycystitis presenting as a mild blood fibrosis. A first presentation, other than heptospinum megaly, other than fatigue. Possibility, but there is no stone 